What's up everybody? Welcome back to this episode of the 15 Minute Mentor where I bring you on my morning drive and we spend about 15-ish minutes together and we talk about things like business, God, finances, life, etc. And in this video today, I'm going to be talking about why so many of God's people are broke and why this is not God's will for your life. We're going to be talking about God and money today. You know, it's interesting. Uh, this morning I opened up Instagram and uh, there was somebody who sent me a prophetic word that basically said, you know, Rick, God says, turn back, you know, turn from your wicked ways and, you know, return to Jesus. And I was thinking like, this is so classic, you know, church person language, just because I post about business and finances and trying to help people learn how to make money. Um, you know, church people, religious church people, not all church people, but religious church people just assume that I've left my first love and that, you know, you can't serve God and you can't serve mammon at the same time. And they have all their scriptures for all the reasons why, you know, money is wicked and the love of money is the root of all evil. And, you know, and I get that, but, um, you know, it's interesting to me. Um, what most people don't know, real quick, for the record, I have not left my first love. I love Jesus, man. And not only have I not turned away from God, I feel like in this past season, I've turned even more near to him. And uh, my family and I are doing amazing. We love God. And honestly, um, what most people don't know is this, is that the whole time that I was leading worship and releasing albums, I say the whole time, but for most of the time that I was doing that, we were also building businesses behind the scenes in the marketplace. Like I wasn't posting on social media about it. I had built a marketing agency, very successful, multi-million dollar marketing agency behind the scenes. Um, I had built an e-commerce brand that scaled up huge, millions of dollars in e-commerce um, and you know, and, and other, other businesses that I was building behind the scenes the whole time that I was putting out worship records and no one was like, you left your first love, you know? And it's, it's so funny because really what's happened in this past season is I've just turned the content upside down. So, you know, in the past I would post about worship and training on worship and then building businesses behind the scenes and love God. And now I'm posting about business and finances and doing worship behind the scenes and still love God. And people are like, oh, you post about business now. You post about, you talk about money. Return to your first love. Turn from your wicked ways. Uh, it's just classic religious church people mindset. And the problem, it, let me say it like this. The difference between the church mindset and kingdom mindset is that church people are very religious when it comes to uh, finances, when it comes to prosperity, when it comes to abundance. And in some regards, I understand where they're coming from because there's been so much perversion around the idea of abundance, prosperity, finances, etc. Um, in the church, there's been a lot of perversion around that idea. But, you know, we can't allow religious past bad experiences to hold us back from what I believe God desires for his people. And that is a kingdom mindset. And the kingdom mindset is this. Deuteronomy 8.18 says, Remember the Lord, it is he who gives you the power to create wealth. Now I talk about this a number of times, but if you're new around here, one thing that I, I always talk about is the idea that for whatever reason, church people, out of one side of their mouth, and by the way, I'm not bitter at the church. I, I is a church people, okay? <laughs> But for a lot of the religious crowd, okay, out of one side of their mouth, they're saying money's bad. And if you have a lot of money, you're greedy. And, oh, I don't want to have that much. I just want to rescue orphans, right? And they're, they're saying this out of, out of one side of their mouth. But out of the other side of their mouth, they're saying, oh, would you please sow a seed into the church? Would you please give so we can build the orphanage? Would you please give so, you know, I don't have to, um, you know, I want to send my kid on a mission trip or whatever it is. And... And so my question is, which one is it? Is money good or is money bad, right? Like when it comes to faith, is money good or is money bad? And you know, some religious people would say like, oh, money's bad, but please give us an offering. 
And some uninformed people would say, well, money's neutral, it's not good or bad. But I submit to you that money is good. And why do I say this? Because in Genesis chapter two, the first place where any kind of money is mentioned or gold, uh, I believe it's in Genesis chapter two, uh, where it's talking about the gold in the land of Havilah, and it says there was gold in the land, and the gold was good. In fact, it's really interesting because there are eight things that God called good in the very, very beginning. He said, you know, creation's good, and, you know, sunshine is good, and, you know, animals, this is good. And of course, he said, man, man and woman, this is very good. But the, and that was the seventh thing that he called good. But the eighth thing that God called good was gold. So it's interesting that like church people, and honestly, it just comes down to the point, like, you know, I think a lot of religion has got into the church to where church people are so confused about money, right? They're like, oh, money is not that big of a deal. Like we don't, we don't serve money. We serve God, of course. But for you religious peeps who are like, oh, money's wicked and we don't want a bunch of money, we just want enough money. Okay, for all of you who say that money's not that big of a deal or it's not that important, are the same people who literally go to a job 40 to 50 hours a week for 40 or 50 years. That's like a humongous chunk of their lives. They're going to their job to make a little bit of money just so they can live, but oh, money's not that important. Listen, money's not the most important part of life, but money is one of the most important parts of life. And it's okay to say that because honestly, that's one of the ways that God has set up the global economy is that we exchange value with one another in the form of you know, the person selling a product or a service solves problems for people with their business, AKA their product or their service. And the person who gets their problem solved says, thank you in the form of dollar signs. It's really this simple guys, right? But uh, I, 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 I tweeted about this um, a few weeks back and it really caused a stink, you know, with the religious folks. Um, but I, I, my tweet said something along the lines of this, okay? If you were the devil, which thank God you're not. But if you were the devil, what would you do when it comes to God's people and money? Okay. If you were the devil, would you rather have your people have resources and money and ability to do your will if you're the devil? Or would you rather have God's people have abundance and resources and ability to do God's will? Well, the answer is obvious. If you were the devil, you would not want God's people to have money. So guess what the enemy does? The enemy creeps in and just like he's always done, begins to twist words. Like the very first thing that we saw the enemy do is twist God's words um, and deceive Eve and tricked her into sin. And the same thing is happening with the enemy and money in the church. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the training. I wanted to take a few moments real quick to invite you to join me for my upcoming Create and Sell Digital Products five day challenge, okay? This is a five day live virtual event where I invite entrepreneurs or would be entrepreneurs just like you to come spend five days with me and get live training on the five moves that anyone can take in order to scale and skyrocket their business and their revenue. Now, the best way to join is as a VIP because VIPs get to spend an extra hour with me every single day and ask your questions live. My most successful students have all been VIPs. That's the best way to join. Listen, you don't wanna miss the upcoming Create and Sell Digital Products five-day challenge. It's completely live. It's coming up right around the corner. Click the link down below in the description. Grab your ticket today. Now back to the training. The enemy is literally coming in and using uh, religion and using really tradition, like false tradition inside of the church that's not kingdom, it's only religion, it's only church, and causing God's people to have a twisted misunderstanding about God's word when it comes to money. 
The love of money is the root of all evil. You can't serve God and mammon. You know, and, and people just, they throw these scriptures out there. Like, you know, I'm a master at scripture and you can't serve God and mammon. Let me ask you a question. Who is more of a servant to mammon? Okay, is it the ethical business owner who has uh, ethically and morally um, worked to build a business that solves problems for people, AKA that serves people on a high level. And that person makes so much money that they can go on vacation whenever they want. They can give however they want to give. They're never stressed about money and they're able to do all that God has called them to do without blinking because they have the resources to do it. Is that person more of a servant to mammon or a slave to mammon? Or is the person who is always struggling financially, doesn't know how they're gonna pay their bills, um, is a slave to their nine to five, and if they lost their job, they wouldn't know what in the world to do because, oh my gosh, we have no more money. Which one is more of a servant to mammon, right? And, and so I think one of the reasons why so many of God's people stay broke, stay struggling, um, when it comes to their finances is because too many of us have conflicting internal beliefs around the subject of money. Again, you know, on one side we'll say like, oh man, we're praying for financial breakthrough, right? Like we need a new church building. We want to build orphanages. We want to rescue orphans. But on the other side of, of our you know, speech, we're saying, oh, you can't worship God and mammon, you know, the love of money is the root of all evil. And like, oh, we don't want to have, you know, we don't want to have money. We just, we just only want Jesus. That's it. Right. And listen, Jesus first. Absolutely. But in order to do what he has called us to do, it takes money. I have a news flash for some of y'all. Okay. It takes money to build orphanages. It takes money to rescue orphans. It takes money to go on missions trips. It takes money to expand the kingdom of God. So why in the world are so many of God's people tricked and deceived by religion in their mindset around money? Oh, like think about this, okay? If you go up to a believer and you ask this Christian, hey, do you believe God wants you to be wise? Most every believer that you ask that to is going to say, well, absolutely. I believe God wants me to be wise for sure. Right. But then if you ask, Hey, do you believe God wants you to be rich or wealthy? Most people are going to get confused and like, well, I don't know. You know, it, it depends. And, uh, you know, I don't know. They don't have an answer. Phones falling here. They don't have an answer for, um, do you believe God wants you to be rich or wealthy? But the problem is, is in Proverbs chapter eight, the Bible says that wisdom has sidekicks and wisdom sidekicks are prosperity, abundance, generational wealth. Like, like you can't be wise without having wisdom sidekicks come alongside her, right? And wisdom sidekicks, some of them, not all of them, but some of wisdom sidekicks are money and prosperity and abundance and riches. So do you do you believe God wants you to be wise? Absolutely. Do you believe God wants you to be rich? Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe. Uh, because people are just confused about what God says about money, about finances, about abundance, about prosperity. Here's what I want to submit to you in this video. Okay. Okay. I want to submit to you, we've got to start thinking differently when it comes to what God said about our abundance, our prosperity, our finances. I believe God has called us to be blessed and not just any kind of blessed. God has called us to be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when we come, blessed when we go. And he's given us the power to create wealth. See what a lot of believers struggle with is they believe that the only way that God's going to bring money is supernaturally. Can I submit something to you here? And I need at least 10 people in the comments. Drop this in the comments, okay? Wisdom is better than miracles. Did you know that it's not God's will 
for his people to live off of miracles. It's not God's will for his people to live off manna. It's not. He fed them manna. He provided miracles because they were stiff-necked, because they were disobedient, because they were fearful. But it wasn't God's will for them to just live off of manna in the wilderness. It was his will for them to go take the land, to go slay giants, and to go conquer fortified cities. So most people in the body of Christ, one of the reasons why they struggle, not only do they struggle because they have conflicting internal beliefs around what God said about abundance or, or uh, finances or prosperity, but also most people in the body of Christ stay struggling in their finances because they believe that the way that God is going to bless them financially is he's just going to poof everything into their bank account. And my friend, that is not how God works. Listen, God feeds the birds, but God is not the one who physically himself puts the worms in the nests. What does that mean? What that means is, is that those who are praying for help, God, please give me financial breakthrough. Please help me, God, right? They need to understand that God is ready, willing, and able to help you, but it's not just going to be him poofing everything into your lap. You've got to go out there and take massive action. You've got to go increase your knowledge. You have to go increase your understanding. You have to go learn the game. Then you have to go take action on what you learned so that you can begin to implement and grow in the place of business and finances, etc. right? God does feed the birds, but he's not the one who puts the worm in their nest. God will bring financial breakthrough to you, but he's not going to poof it into your bank account. He wants you to level up, to become more, okay? God wants us as his people to grow in the place of abundance, prosperity, and he wants to, to entrust more to us, but it can't happen if we stay confused around the subject of money, around the subject of prosperity, abundance, finances, etc. If we think that if we're double-minded, right? That's what James said. If you're double-minded, you're unstable. Why are God's people broke? Because they're double-minded when it comes to finances. Half of their mind thinks that money is needed to do God's work. They understand that. But the other half of their mind thinks that money's bad. It's wicked. It's evil. You shouldn't have a lot of money right? We got to, we got to be singular focus on this. We have to change our understanding when it comes to God, when it comes to finances, when it comes to prosperity, when it comes to abundance. And I'm telling you guys and gals this, there is an amazing way to grow your finances and it's to become an entrepreneur. It's to start a business and it's to ethically and morally go out to the market and come up with creative solutions to solve problems for people then go out there, serve your market by selling them your solution in the form of a product or a service. And then exchange in exchange, they're gonna say thank you by paying you dollar signs, by, by paying you dollars. 